us make man we are answering the first question let us make that man in our image the image of god means his spiritual quality man everyone including you was made in the image that spiritual quality of god and then man was made in his likeness his likeness means his functionality to have two hands one head two legs and so on and so forth so man this man that is so confused moving around wondering what his destiny is about the bible says that man was made in the image and the likeness of god i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child of god that i'm no longer slave to fear i am a child listen can i tell you this please look up many of us came from backgrounds where growing up they call you several names to the point that you do not even know who and what you are they named you after your result they named you after your failure they named you after any maybe any health challenge you may have many times in the bible you find out that people were named after their condition a man sat at the gate of jericho at the passage of jericho and the bible calls him blind batimio that's not a name batimio means the son of timio the blind man who is the son of timio what a description and you see we live through all these different names that they call us some call you stupid some call you foolish some call you a cursed child because of the region you came from and when it's now time for you to manifest destiny all these names start clamoring around your head and you are unable to move forward but you must answer that question tonight i have heard what my father said i am i've heard what my mother said i am i've heard what my school said i am i've heard what social media said i am god of heaven who am i it's a question you must ask tonight and you must answer i'm giving you help in answering that question i may not be a billionaire's child you may say i may not be a professor's child you may say i may not come from a privileged family but i am a child of god it's a very powerful statement If there is nothing in your life that you think is worth celebrating find rest in this description of your identity I am a child of God Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 to 16 let me tell you what else you are according to scripture Matthew 5 from verse 13 the Bible says ye are the salt of the earth please shout it after me say i am the salt of the earth one more time say i am the salt of the earth now look up please the assignment of salt salt has two basic assignments number one for preservation number two to add value or taste so when god says through his word that you are salt it means i cannot be a disadvantage to my world you are the salt of the earth a system of preservation and a system of value when you have this identity you don't walk around trying to look for groups to endorse you you don't try to look for friends and association to give you an accreditation god already called you an advantage the bible says and everything adam called it that was the name thereof it's up to you to agree with God and say I am truly salt and you know something about salt women many of you are involved in cooking 
there are times that if you miss some ingredients the food is is already you can't you can't are we together now you have to cut some ingredients at a certain time it is never too late to add salt to food no even if it's even if you make a mistake and you cook and the salt is not there even on the table you can still add the salt and you will not know whether you added it before or after the effect will still be the same say i am the salt of the earth let no one bully you that you came too late no salt is never too late i am the salt of the earth i bring preservation and i bring value the bible says ye are the light of the world give us verse yes thank you you are the light of the world verse 14 now you know what it means to be light light talks of solution light talks of the absence of darkness and confusion and chaos so in addition to being solved he says to you that i am light someone prophesy say i am light a light to my family a light in ministry a light in business a light in destiny the definition of darkness is my world without me i am light and the bible says john 1 5 that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not let me tell you this lack of understanding identity is why we have occult groups today because these occult groups create a narrative if you join us they say you are powerful there are many useless groups online offline many groups that are antichrist in context but the pressure to become what god already says you are has pushed people to mortgage their destinies I'm walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Walking in power, walking in miracles. I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. Please hear me. I don't care what circumstance led to your birth prepared or not i don't care the the context i don't care how bad your past had been i don't care what the situation is let god be true and every man a liar if he calls you a blessing you are a blessing if he calls you salt you are salt if he calls you light you are light prophesy to yourself in one minute that in the name of jesus I reject from my life everything God did not say I am that relationship is trying to prove to me like I am a non-entity my lecturers respectfully may have called me names that should not be maybe my parents called me names that should not be they call you the black sheep in the family they call you a useless person answer that question tonight I am greatness on my way to happen. I am the light, the light. I am salt. I am a child of God, a co-heir with God and a joint heir with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities, far above powers. In the name of Jesus, Please be seated. The first question tonight is who am I? I found this question and it gave me rest in my life. I took time to study who I was and who I am and more importantly, who I was and I am in Christ. It gave me rest, no pressure to prove any point no pressure to try to live to no 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 i don't define myself just by what i wear i don't define myself just by what i eat 
I don't define myself just by what I enter in terms of a vehicle or the house that I live in. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. It's just for me. Just for me. Jesus came and paid it just for me. Just for me. Just for me. Listen. You know the value of a thing by what is used to purchase it when you go to the market to buy things they are in, usually in grades maybe bags or food stuff they will tell you this one is thirty thousand this one is fifty thousand women they can bring out one jewelry and say this one is fifty thousand then they bring out something that looks like what you can swallow and tell you this is himself to become a baby walked upon the earth for 30 years and died raised you up with him and some individual looks at you and says you are a failure simply because of your cgpa looks at you and says you are a failure simply because you did not come from a background that gave you some privilege can i tell you settle that question tonight i may not have all the things that men clamor for for now but i settle in this fact that i'm a child of god i am one with him and i am a wonder on my way to happen in the name of jesus christ question two what is the second question you must ask if you want to live a life of purpose a life of meaning where am i from a very simple but powerful question where am i from where am i coming from the first question seeks to solve the issue of identity crisis the second question seeks to solve the issue of your source and your connection it's important for you to know you did not just evolve from a fish to a man with all due respect to science it took the creativity of the God of heaven. He brought you right from where he was. He did not just spit you out of thin air. You are not just a product of a chemical reaction somewhere. Where am I from? Joshua chapter 24 from verse 14 and 15. When you know where you are from, you will know how you need to be connected. Listen, please look up. Fish came out of water and it must be connected to water the birds must be connected to the air and the trees for their survival when you know where you came from and who you came out from you will know that you need him not just as a matter of tea and bread but a matter of life not knowing where you came from is why a lot of people have not handed everything over to jesus and to serve the living god joshua 24 14 and 15 now therefore fear the lord he said and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood please continue give it to us and in egypt and serve the lord verse 15 now and if it seem evil unto you to serve the lord he said choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your of, of your father or the gods that were whatever it is all of those gods that are on the other side the gods of the amorite but as for me and my house because i know where i come from it's a choice that i've made i will serve the lord i need him as a matter of life and death the question where you are coming from will immediately put you in a position 
where you are not ashamed to be connected to source are we together there are many people today who act as if there is no god in heaven there are many people who act today as if they just appeared and evolved out of space knowing that man came from god means that man must depend on god and be connected to him to prosper is that true there is a saying that a river that forgets its source that river will dry up a destiny and a life that forgets its source will dry up the second question that god is asking you tonight and beckoning that you must answer is the question of your source your origin and your connection john chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 very quickly let's hurry up john chapter 1 6 and 7 the bible says there was a man help me read that scripture if you can see it one to read there was a man stop 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 there was a man sent from where not sent from zechariah not sent from elizabeth not sent from abel kuta or lagos or borno state or emo state no there was a man sent from god when he arrived the earth they gave him a name and they named him john but the bible says the man was sent from god question where are you from if you ever believe you are just a product of your father and your mother the frame that gave your spirit its habitation on earth may have come from your geography but believe me when i tell you you are sent from god that means you have to be connected to god to find fulfillment you can replace god with any and every other thing it will not give you fulfillment the bible says god has put eternity in the heart of man it's a realm that only his size can occupy no matter what you do nothing else will ever fill that space is someone learning can i tell you when we make altar calls it is not just because we are saving people from going to hell this is more than an issue of hellfire you are bringing people to be connected to their source watch this this beautiful fan here is blowing and giving me cool air while i preach you disconnect this from the source you don't need to do anything to the fan it will stand here looking useless no matter what else you touch here the value that you get here is derived from the connection there this is very powerful our world today makes it archaic to be spiritual vocally spiritual and declare your connection to god we live in a world today where the more you seem to practice secular humanism and ignore the reality of the god in heaven the more you seem to be approved by the status quo of society i bring you a message tonight can i tell you every one of you seated looking at me you need god in your life not just as a system of escape from hellfire alone he defines the value of your life you are everything lord you are everything you are everything listen i love the psalmist the psalmist loved god so much you would see him describe his value 
the value of God in his life where can I hide from your presence he says as the deer pants after the water brooks he says so my soul longs for you Psalm 63 says oh God you are my God he says early will I seek you my soul thirsts for you as in a dry and a weary land where no water is he said to see your power and your glory even as I have seen in the sanctuary let me encourage you my dear people never find it a thing of shame to declare your honor and your allegiance from the to the government and the God of heaven that is your source even if you are in the midst of people and your ringtone it rings and it's a song that honors God don't be too quick to offer it because you think it will bring shame for you no You must be vocally and unashamed about your love and your your acknowledgement of the god of heaven over your life let me tell you what the bible says in proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding verse 6 it says in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge your source acknowledge your source i acknowledge him always and forever no matter what he does in and through my life when men clap for you make sure you let them know that i am what i am today because i am connected to he that is was and is forever and can i tell you if god be for you if that god that you have so acknowledged be for you standing beside you like a mighty terrible one there is nothing that anyone can do against you if you're with me say amen, amen. question number three why am i here the first question is who am i a question of your identity number two where am i from your source and your connection and your allegiance question number three now why am i here this is a question of purpose and destiny why am i here hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7 let's hurry up so we can pray hebrews 10 and verse 7 very powerful scripture then said i lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will O god so i have come according to the script of a book that is written i'm not just one who is moving around and hoping to find something to do with my life there is already a script about my life my assignment is to find it and walk in keeping with it john chapter 4 and verse 34 hear what jesus said after his discourse with the woman at the well when the disciples came and met him here's what jesus told them my meat that is my satisfaction is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it you can start and not finish to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it please look up my dearly revered mentor whom i honor even in his death dr miles munro one of the things that he taught me and taught the body of christ is that the wealthiest place on earth today is not the gold mines in Congo and parts of Africa it's not the oil wells in the Middle East that the wealthiest place on earth today he called it the cemetery where people died with visions that never came to pass books that were not written 
facilities that were never built men and women who were destined to make maximum impact in their generation some of them went as armed robbers and died in shame some of them died cheaply because the devil wasted and ended their life can i tell you this if you want to live a meaningful life you call this conference being intentional you must answer that question why am i here john chapter 1 where we read earlier verse 7 tells us why john came and this represents the universal mandate of every believer he says the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through him his witness might believe whether this will happen through ministry whether this will happen through business and entrepreneurship whether this will happen through leadership whether this will happen through politics and governance whether this will happen by being an academician it does not matter the geography of the witness the same came for a witness to bear witness to the light that all men through his witness might believe the first serious book i remember reading of course aside from all of the manuals and the rest that you would get um handbooks you know in the seminary and all of that the first serious book that i remember intentionally reading reading for the purpose of my destiny is discovering your purpose there had been many other books devotionals and other books that i remember reading but i didn't pay attention to them for many of them i just read them for reading sake in all honesty just to fill that void of spirituality but the first book i remember sitting down with a notebook side by side and saying i want to change my life things cannot be like this when i found that book i was already making some level of impact but i wanted to be intentional about my life and it changed my life forever listen to me if you cannot tell me why you are on earth in one sentence you do not know why you are here as simple as this looks you will be surprised that there are so many people who do not know why they are here most people allow society to define their relevance per time and per season so a student now soon you'll be a graduate or you're already a graduate then the next thing in your agenda becomes to get a job then raise a family then raise children then try to manage some kind of sicknesses that come from depression and middle age then you die it's not a wise way to live you can live with intention Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. This is the part of the song I love. Intentional, intentional God. Everything is working out for my good. Hear me? He's intentional about making everything work out for you according to jeremiah 29 and verse 11 that i know the thoughts that i think towards you say the lord they have thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end you must be intentional about discovering why you are here some of you after this conference you need to go to a bookstore and go and get materials that help to define your purpose for existence question four very quickly what can i do oh powerful this 
is a question that seeks to help you understand your abilities your giftings and your potentials question one who am i question two where am i from question three why am i here question four what can i do let me tell you what you can do philippians 4 13. philippians 4 and verse 13. everyone read it loud and clear if you can see ready one to read i can do all things through christ which strengthened me Acts chapter 13 and verse 6. What can I do? I can't be a non entity here. This is identifying your giftings, identifying your potentials. Dr. Miles Munro would define potentials as your inherent abilities, abilities that are locked up within you. You don't have to create or invent them, you only develop and deploy them. Acts 13 6 did I get that right please look for it for me and David after he served his generation that's what I'm looking for he slept with his fathers after he served his generation once you're doing that let's go huh? 13 36 I missed one figure here please give us 13 36 same acts 13 thank you that's the scripture i'm looking for read with me please one to go for david after he had served his own generation by the will of god fell on sleep hold on that means you are not permitted to go until you bring that which is locked up within you and you serve your generation with it discovering your place in life is important but discovering the tools now please look up if i wear a lab coat and you see me hang a stethoscope on my neck you would most likely call me a doctor is that true if you see me wear an engineering helmet and holding a tape or holding something around you will call me an engineer if you see me with a t-square and a drawing board or some laptop using autocad you most likely say i'm an architect or a builder your abilities are pointers to your potential you can know where you are going by what tools you were given you can call somebody with a hammer and a nail a doctor he most likely may be a carpenter what can i do what do i have in exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2 then we jump to verse 17 please write it and, and watch this carefully exodus chapter 4 the lord appeared to moses and the bible says and moses answered and said behold they will not believe me i have found where i'm to go i know my assignment my assignment is to be a deliverer but what tools will i use please keep that scripture there it's not enough to find your assignment you must know the tools that will make for your efficiency the bible says they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the lord had not appeared unto thee next verse verse 2 and the lord said unto him please read with me everybody one to read and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod god will never send you until he put something in your hand that rod for someone that rod is your ability to sing 
for someone that rod is supernatural intelligence for someone that rod is leadership acumen for someone that rod is physical strength for someone that rod is the ability to be so trusted that that integrity and dependability it's time for you to take that rod he's put in your hand because the king's word and the king's duty and the king's business requires haste go to verse 17 of exodus chapter 4 it says and thou shalt take this rod in your hand wherewith shalt thou do signs as you are going to fulfill purpose your potential that will be what you will use to be a blessing to people can i tell you this please look up i remember many many years ago getting a sheet of paper and writing a list of my potentials when i found out what i'm teaching you now i had just in fact I, i'm not even sure i'd started ministry i wrote it down i remember i still have the book old book but it's there let me tell you the things i wrote i wrote singing i wrote creativity i wrote counseling i wrote the ability to teach all of those things there is none of them that is not in use in my life today can i tell you this everything that you will use to serve the purposes of god is already within you everything david had became the weapon if it was if it was the the courage of a warrior and the ability to sling he used it to kill goliath if it was music he used it to drive a spirit out of Saul. can i tell you don't waste anything god gave you let me give you an assignment write out this night make it an assignment everything you know that constitutes an advantage in your life write it my dear sister if God has given you beauty, don't be shy and say, beauty, do I write it? Go and ask Esther. It was beauty that took her to the palace. And now she was able to represent the purposes of God. Everything God gave you, forget the abuses that happened here and there. Don't let men laugh at anything God gave you. Gentlemen, if God gave you stature and wisdom, know that that is a tool for your assignment. If you don't use it for the kingdom, the devil will help you use it to destroy others can i tell you this my dear friend the five points and the 4.5 you keep hitting don't you think it is a waste your cgpa is a revelation that god put something in your head that will be needed somewhere in your destiny believers and especially in Africa, we are masters at despising what God gave us. We keep admiring things in people that do not have half of what God has given us. Can I tell you, nobody will celebrate your gift that you don't believe in. You have to believe in it first. Colonel Sanders, you've heard about him, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That man was a military man, but he had passion for, cook, for cooking generally. And he came up with a recipe, a unique recipe. After he had retired from the army, he said, I can't waste my life like this. My life is not just to be a military man. And he came up with his recipe. That's what birthed what you call KFC today. KFC was a man who made up his mind that he would die empty. listen to me as i look at everyone here tonight i'm not just seeing men i'm seeing businesses i'm seeing books i'm seeing institutes i'm seeing evangelists i'm seeing anointings i'm seeing mantles i'm seeing graces can i tell you this hear me some of you your grace to preach someday when the generation of our fathers have gone some of you who are seated there you will be the one standing here and you will you will recap this thing you will say 30 years ago 
when our fathers were still here please don't disappoint destiny through carelessness make up your mind that everything god gave me today miles munro has gone but some of us remain his students and extensions of his conviction Is God speaking to someone? I love the hymn that says, I'll do as it beats me, whatever the cost. I'll be a true soldier. Some of you don't remember those hymns again. The writers were people who wrote with understanding. What can I do? There is nobody seated under the sound of my voice who is empty. What do you have in your house? Second Kings 4. The woman said nothing except she did not know that what she ignored was what had the power to bail her out. Can I tell you this? Your reward in life will be based on your discovering, your developing and you're deploying your gift let me repeat your reward in life will come as a result of discovering developing and deploying your gifts i don't do ministry for money i don't do ministry for fame i don't do ministry for honor i don't do ministry for recognition I do ministry because I love Jesus and I found it as a divine mandate over my life. But I tell you sincerely, my dear people, most of what many, most of what people will look for in their lifetime in discovering, developing, and deploying the giftings of God, He has brought them to my life so cheaply that sometimes I wonder. I say, is it true that life can be this cheap? You don't know how cheap life can be till you are in the presence. Look, no matter how a fish tries to fly, it can't do well flying. There are dolphins that try to fly, but they go back as a reminder that you were designed for the sea. There are birds that try to step into the water. Can I tell you this? You are a master when you develop discover develop and deploy your gifting there are gentlemen handling this camera right now as anointed as you think i am it is not my place if i go and push this man and i say you don't know what the anointing can do and i hold that camera you may be annoyed by what you are seeing you see that because it is not a gift it is not an ability I've not invested in developing it and I'm not deploying it finding your gift is only one part of the equation listen to me there is a difference or there is a relationship between competence and confidence you will remain in shame for the rest of your life until you find something that stands you out listen end this journey of competition fighting getting angry there is no space for that kill that any space for those things in your life and fill it up with relevance that brands you by discovering your place you never see planes clashing in the air because of space traffic only happens on land but once you are in the air there is space for every plane no matter how big it is you never see traffic at sea like a big these giant ships that carry cars that have almost skyscrapers built in them and yet they move freely at sea can i tell you this there is a space for you let your gift take you there the bible says the gift of a man are you learning something tonight the gift of a man someone shout i am gifted let the devil hear it say i am gifted let your destiny hear it say i am gifted 
let your past here and say I am gifted there is something I have that my world can celebrate Jesus for find your own many have found theirs and it took them from levels of shame and reproach to enviable destinies let me give you an assignment please when you go back go and write everything you know in your life that constitutes an advantage don't let anybody laugh at you no matter how stupid it sounds write it God you gave me long hair write it God you gave me an ability to talk once I open my mouth write it God you gave me this beautiful voice to sing write it God you gave me this grace this charisma for leadership every time I'm in the midst of people they seem to listen to me write it I will show you what you are doing is found in Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith it says are we together I want us to read it together Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6 that the, if you can't find it let me just quote it that the communication of your faith it says may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus have you acknowledged the good things in you if they tell you you have a big head is that the only thing you have they must say the other ones you have too don't don't dwell in negative things and say oh I have a big head I am short I am tall let me tell you this focus anything you focus on grows and magnifies in your life you focus on failures you keep wishing things that will never be you be proud of being you this rod you have given me to the nations we go oh God I will take that rod of healing that rod of your word that rod of leadership that rod of creativity let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus the son of the living God beginning from tonight may your rod begin to speak for you in your campus in your place of work may the rod the ability the gift the talent that God has put within your spirit receive grace to identify it receive grace to develop it and receive grace to deploy it hallelujah please sit down we're wrapping up you see in africa a man can be in his 20s and they may never allow him to develop his gift why they will say he's a child there is a wrong narrative you must change in africa you see people getting old and not blessing their world with any gift they say they are children you go to places like china and you will find young children who are barely teenagers 11 12 discovering things that are changing the world because the atmosphere allows for creativity don't be like jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 jeremiah said i am young verse 6 when he said right from your mother's womb i call you and i ordain you to be a prophet to the nations jeremiah said ah lord behold i cannot speak for i am a child don't say i'm a child don't give god excuses when you read exodus chapter 4 at a point god became angry with moses because moses kept giving excuses lord i am a stammerer lord i am this and god said, who created the mouth said keep quiet moses who knows moses would have received his healing but he did not believe that god could heal him and he said all right let aaron come and be your spokesman since you think that the mouth i gave you is useless can i tell you every time you ignore what god has given you god will transfer that grace to someone else who can appreciate it it's true go and read your bible matthew 26 the parable of the talents see what happened to the man who ignored his own talent when he brought it he said i know you are a hard man you like reaping where you did not sow look at what you gave me 
and he said no problem give it to me he took it to the man who identified it there is nothing god gave me that will not be used to bless my world if he gave me a voice to sing i will sing if he gave me a brain to think i will think if he gave me a lips to declare his grace i will declare it. if he gave me an anointing to heal i will heal every sick person i find if he gave me a grace to cast out devils i will cast out every devil i find everything you have given me oh god let it be used for your glory is someone learning tonight question one who am i question two where am i from question three why am i here question four what can i do question five where am i going the fifth and the last question you must answer is a question about your destination both here and when this life is over is the fifth question that any man who wants to live a life of meaning and purpose and relevance must answer first corinthians 15 19 please write it down first corinthians 15 19 Let's read together if we can see it. Ready? One, two, read. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, he said we are of all men most miserable. That means in all of your voyage, you come to a point where you realize that someday this life will be over. No matter how young you think you are, no matter how old you think you are, even the baby that was born today, will get to a point where their lives and their destinies wrap up whether it is the day that you see him or the day he sees you the day both of you meet that is the end of your chapter here all my days on earth i will await the moment that i see you face to face for nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry huh. Treasure of my heart and of my soul Sin my weakness, you are merciful Redeemer of my past and present wrong You're the holder of my future days to come So who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty, endless war Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry Yes, you are the cup that will run dry Hear me, ladies and gentlemen you are closer to your the end of your day now than you were when you woke up this morning you may not like to hear what i'm saying but it's the truth whether you like it or not for every time you celebrate your birthday realize that you're celebrating two things number one you are celebrating the reason for which you were born not just the day you were born you are celebrating the reason for which you were born number two you are acknowledging the fact that time is going celebration of birthday is an acknowledgement that i do not have forever on this earth can i tell you it is my desire and my prayer for you that by the time he calls you will not go in shame and pain and start giving excuses and say god but i did not finish this till he returns or calls me home here in the love of christ I stand. 
Until he returns Or calls me home Here in the love of Christ Can I tell you this? We're about to pray. Everyone, please listen to me very carefully. Everybody who is gone today was once in someone else's funeral. Everybody who is dead today once stood before a dead body. Can I tell you this? By reason of the work that God has called me to do, I have seen many funerals in my life. I have seen people that I love. I get news about someone's transition an average of every day. Because usually when people die, they reach me in hope that maybe let's see if we can pray for the person to come back. So I get text messages. A prominent man in this nation who was just appointed not too long, just passed on to glory. And I remember my phone text messages. Please, let's pray for this person. Can I tell you this? Every one of you, including the person talking, if Christ tarries one day, this life. Listen carefully. Only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. When it's all be said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you lose our weakness and find precious joy in Mary clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen there are many who have gone before us some of them started this year with us in fact some of them were alive last week as at last week if i preach this message they would think they still had 30 years not knowing they had seven days left how many days we have ours is to continue to declare long life so that we can serve his purposes but I repeat that song again till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ I now listen carefully for those who have answered this question you don't fear death you will live long ago don't worry don't be afraid but the reason is not because of fear the reason is because you need time for your assignment you must get to a point in your life where like paul you can say for me to live is christ but to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord i came here tonight as led by the spirit of god to ask you these five questions we're about to pray listen for some of you question five god asked certain people question five at the start of this year they refuse to answer now it's too late now hear me please what i forgot to tell you is that all these five questions you cannot answer them when you are gone you are only given a chance to answer them within the frame of your lifetime i bring you good news i hope it does not sound like bad news 
the time is ticking you would have answered these questions last year but you ignored it his majesty has brought me again to ask you one more time question one have you found who you are in Christ question two have you recognized your source have you recognized your connection question three what's question three where are you from and why are you here please go back and ask that question why am i here i'm not just here to escort others clapping for people while they are making it question four what do i have or what can i do what can i do I may not be able to do everything is not needed but the one thing that God has mandated me to do can I tell you this I vowed a vow with my life that as far as it depends on me I don't claim to know everything I don't claim I can do everything yes in Christ but as far as destiny is concerned I have my allocation I vowed a vow that I will not fail my generation can I tell you this you are listening to me today because many years ago i was intentional about my life i made up my mind that i was not going to waste my time roaming around earth stop wasting your time in jealousy in bitterness in competition and begin to focus on the matters of destiny and don't let the devil lie to you that you are small don't let the devil lie to you that you are young We'll sing one more hymn and then we'll stand. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. You know that hymn? Ye soldiers of the cross, lift up his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory on to beat, his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Two prayer points. I'm going to leave you for the next two minutes our time is gone I don't know how you are going to cry before your God of heaven forget about whether I'm a preacher I'm a student fellowship president throw that one behind cry for your destiny in the next two or three minutes cry for your destiny please pray Please pray. Please pray. Answer these questions in prayer. Sheba katoska lekete prandegetesh. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Let mercy find me tonight, O God. Someone is praying. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What can I do? And more importantly, where am I going when this life is over? Five questions you must ask and you must answer. To live a life of meaning and a life of purpose. One more minute. Cry before the God of heaven. Shateke parakoshka libran negetes. 
Embra kete kete bakata pranda katos kete balatos. Someone is praying. As you pray, remember your generation. They are looking up to you. As you are praying, may God open your eyes to see the crusade ground that is waiting for you when you develop that gifting of God. See the hospitals that you will build as a result of living a purposeful life. See the lives that will say thank you that you were born. seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and lift the way that you lift set our hearts on you so you'll do what you do we need a move this is a move this is the future of four square praying and remaining hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point and i speak over your life father i receive the grace not to fail my generation i receive that grace whatever it will take i obtain grace i obtain grace if it takes prayer i will pray if it takes fasting i will fast if it takes studying the word i will study Lord, I will not fail my generation in business, in politics, in ministry, in family. Keep praying you have one more minute shalege bereko shalakata embra kateka teka 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 telepatusia In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please do not forget what you learned tonight go and listen to this teaching again and answer these five questions like a student 
would answer an exam because if you fail this exam it's not just a carryover you will have if you fail this exam it can cost you your life and your relevance let me repeat the question one last time number one who am i a question of your identity number two where am i from a question of your source and your connection and your allegiance question three why am i here a question of purpose finding your place in life question four what can i do identifying developing and deploying your gifts your potentials and number five where am i going to when this life is over let me remind you of the assignment i gave you when you go back home tonight go and write it lord what is my place in destiny reveal to me and write everything that constitutes an advantage in your life start developing it developing it by buying relevant materials developing it by develop it by read reading the books and listening to relevant teachings that relate to that area of gifting and i can assure you you're on your way prophetic word for someone you have been recycling pain in your life because you have refused to do everything he said selective obedience is still disobedience did you hear what i said selective obedience or convenient obedience is disobedience let me give you two stories about this man standing before you there was a time in my life where the lord gave me an instruction that i emptied everything everything i had not just money clothes i didn't have much I put everything in a bag. I was in Port Harcourt. I prayed in tongues for three hours on it. It's easy to give Ishmael. But you know it is Isaac. Because for days you will not be able to sleep. You will be asking, oh God, Isaac is gone. But just verify. Let me be sure that it was you that said I should give him. I carried my bag. And I dragged it to church. There was an overflow and I sat down outside. When people were sowing and giving and doing everything, God now decided to embarrass me and I sat quietly until everybody was done giving. Then the Lord said, now you can go. I was dragging my bag. God is my witness to the front of the altar. People were looking at me. The bag was not something that if I gave you, you even collect. That was not a gift. That was a sacrifice. I dragged it when I got to the altar. As I dropped it there, something died in me. I went out and I sat down. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And said, my son, from today, you have entered wealth. It was the voice of God to me. By the next day, I remember, if I recall, 6, 10 in the morning, someone would call me and say, is this so, 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 and so. I thought, is this scammers and fraudsters? I said, no, no, please don't call me. And he said, God gave me an instruction. Send me your account number. Who are you? Why should I send my account number? What is there? You want to finish what is left? There, there was nothing there. And this man sent me something that... At that time, if you receive that, it is a, it, you will know that God is good to you. And one level of blessing after another. This same instruction came even in the ministry. When we started, God gave that instruction. I'm not necessarily talking about money. I'm talking of obedience to the latter. Hallelujah. Many of us here seated, 
are yet to truly walk in the reality of obedience a life that is totally sold out that if god says it and you verify that it is him i'm on my way going and nothing will end and stop that journey let me read one more scripture before we begin to pray deuteronomy chapter 8 we are reading the first 13 verses deuteronomy chapter 8 Deuteronomy 8 verse 1 28 28 did i say 8 my apologies 28 verse 1 deuteronomy 28, 28 and verse 1. 1 and it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the thy lord thy god are you seeing the condition now if thou shalt hearken diligently to the voice of the lord uh -huh, to observe to observe and to do, and to do how many oh. all his commandments which yeah. i command you this day what are the blessings that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings uh-huh go ahead this we come on thee and overtake thee and overtake you if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord what are the blessings number one Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall thou be fruit of thy body. Blessed shall be the fruit of and your the body. The fruit of thy ground. The fruit of your ground. And the fruit of thy cattle. The fruit of your cattle. And the increase of thy kind. The increase of your kind. And the flocks of thy sheep. The flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall thou be basket and thy store. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall that be when thou comest in, uh -huh. and blessed shall that be when thou goest out. There are people that are only blessed when they come in. There are people that are only blessed when they go out. But he said, blessed shall you be whether you are coming in or going out. He says, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten, not in your absence before your face he said they shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways so don't blame those who you gossip about them in the secret and the punishment starts right there as you are gossiping and they don't even know there is something on them that supervises compliance to the blessing are we together the Lord shall command the blessing. This is it. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thy storehouses. Can I be honest with you? The blessing of God is more than money and resources. But it is impossible to carry the blessing. And then the area of resources will not tell. It is the most focal expression of the blessing of the Lord upon a man. I'm going to say something that will trouble you. Forgive me. If you have been in Christ and you have been in the kingdom for at least five to six years, diligently sitting under any kind of structured apostolic and prophetic mentorship structure and learning the ways of God and among the many things that answers in your life, your finances does not begin to have a testament. Something is wrong with your obedience believe me when i tell you you may not have everything as yet but when you plant the crop does not grow in one day but it also does not take one year to start coming out it may not become a tree but we need to begin to see evidence that it was truly planted the bible says they that be planted in the house of god that they will flourish in the courts of our god it even says in old age they will be fat and flourishing i read that scripture and it is another way of describing our father that in old age they will be fat and flourishing there are people who are 40 and you will mistaken them for 60. do you know why it's not just a demonic attack their life has been a plethora of the consequences of living in disobedience in disobedience anything will fight you including what was sent to bless you 
in disobedience anything will fight you including what was sent to bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord let's read to 13 and we're done the Lord, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that uh, rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Uh -huh. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Verse Lord, 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself uh -huh. and he has sworn as, as he has sworn, sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments now that's the, the condition Lord. again the Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn or commanded if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord and walk in his ways verse 10 and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and, and they, they shall be, be afraid, afraid of, of thee. thee what a blessed man did the bible not did we not see this in the life of isaac that he began to prosper and continued prospering and prospered until the point that the philistines envied him 11 we're reading to 13 and the lord shall make thee plenteous in goods he shall make you plenteous in goods and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy ground and in the land which the lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee the lord shall open unto thee his good treasure uh -huh. the heaven to give thee rain unto the land in his season and to bless all the works of thy hand as a result of this blessing thou shall lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow the last verse and the lord shall make thee the head ah. and not the tail there it is and thou shalt be above only say only, only. somebody shall say only only above only above no only. possibility of going down thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if 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 Thou shalt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I commanded this day to observe and to do them. When the young boy Joshua was about to take over from God in Joshua, uh, from Moses in Joshua chapter 1, the Lord came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant, is dead. And he began to admonish him to be courageous. When we get to verse 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from out of your mouth that thou shalt meditate therein is that true day and night that thou mayest observe to do not some all that is written therein he says then shall thou make thy ways prosperous and you shall have good success Take it down for me. I feel like singing a song. When we walk with the Lord In the light of His word What a glory He sheds on our way While we do His good will he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey listen carefully trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus every area where you do not see the power of God in your life is the area where your disobedience has restrained you. Every area where you do not see the manifest goodness of God in your life. You can easily know the areas of disobedience in your life by looking at the manifestation of the blessing in your life. 
if you find out that the hand of God is strong upon your spiritual life, rich prayer life, rich word study life, there is obedience answering there. Obedience foreruns the manifestation of the blessing. If you find out that you are suffering in your finances, in spite of the tongues you are praying, I tell you sincerely, check well. Obedience is authorizing pain somewhere. Before you see the glory of God, you must know his ways. And then you must walk in his ways. Are we together now? In Exodus chapter 33, when you read from verse 15, Moses prayed and he said, 33, I hope I got that right. And he said, show me, was it 13 now or 18? I don't know which one. That you show me your ways. And then, I think that should be 13 or so. Show me your ways. And then when you get to verse 18, he now says to show me your glory. I beseech you, verse 13, 33, 13. The first thing he requested was show me your ways. Let me know your ways. Then verse 18, he now said, show me your glory. Hallelujah. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Leviticus 9 verse 6, we're about to pray. Everybody please read. Are you ready? One to read. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory of the Lord shall appear. The glory of the Lord does not just come because you need it. No. It will come at the instance there will always be something for you to do. If it is water you want to be turned to wine, he says go and fill six vessels. You want a great catch? Obey him and cast your net to the right side. Daniel! You want to see the mighty hand of God? Then refuse and defy the king's command. As proof that you honor the Lord, even if you will be put in the lion's den. Listen to me. There are many families here under the sound of my voice, respectfully speaking. The reason why there's consistent conflict between husband and wife is because someone is not obeying scripture. When the man does not obey scripture to be Abba, husband, father, and priest. There will be trouble in that marriage when the woman does not obey god to be wife mother and priest there will be some there will be problem in that home now yesterday i took out on the men a bit even though it's a men conference but let me balance it also and respectfully talk to my mothers my aunties my sisters because we need to be careful with some of these trends we embrace, globally speaking. I'm not a sadist, but let me tell you, I need to balance it. The house of God is the ground and the pillar of truth. There is a lot that we are shipping as far as the context of family is concerned. Whether you like it or not, the man is the head of the home, period. I apologize, but this is the truth. Please help if there's anyone under the anointing there just help them we're about to pray listen dear women the men are not those above them they take care of those below them but they will always fight those who claim equality with them so there is a position that when a woman takes I, I, because I, I know that I have, I have lovingly spoken to the men yesterday. We need to challenge ourselves. But I also need to balance it because there are sincere men who are bleeding quietly. We live in a world today where anything that happens once it is male and female, the man is at fault. It's easy to, rem to remember Women's Day, but Men's Day we even forget. The world sees men as a nuisance to civilization. But ask God why he's a man. The God of heaven.
decided to take on that position of a man it's very important let me tell you this i charge every woman in word of life take this as an admonishment from a heart that loves you sincerely treat your husband with honor treat your husband with respect throw away any pride don't allow society to interpret virtue as weakness our world today calls a virtuous woman a weak one treat him with honor and you will see things about that man you have never seen are we together men we have charged ourselves under god don't come and beat anybody's daughter humiliate anybody's daughter make her life miserable because of marriage no it's unscriptural no it's unscriptural it's unscriptural the bible never said to love a woman the way you want he said as christ loved the church if you understand that scripture you should be afraid because no man can love a woman as christ loved the church that means you immediately understand that marriage is not between two people marriage is between two physical people but marriage is between three entities the lord being the first not the third if your marriage is between you and your wife alone you are in trouble especially in this end time quickly submit to the first authority your authority is only valid as a man to the degree to which you submit to the authority of christ but women let's learn a lesson from genesis chapter 1 2 and 3 every time satan wants to attack adam he comes to his eve satan wanting to attack the second adam who is christ is now attacking his eve who is the church when satan wants to destroy the family he looks for the eve because it was eve that was deceived man was not deceived men don't fall because of deception they fall because of love it's in your bible this is not a wise saying Your, listen, the first Adam fell. The Bible says he took of the tree. She took of the tree and gave her husband who was there with her. It's in your Bible. The same way the second Adam, Jesus, he was not deceived. He came willingly to join his Eve. That means every woman in any home, be careful because you are the first point of attack when the devil wants to destroy your home hallelujah now i don't claim to know everything about ministering and deliverance but anybody who has been in the ministry of healing and deliverance you can tell that out of 10 people in need of deliverance about seven or eight may most likely be women let me tell you why it's not because they are bad do you know that strangely speaking the holy spirit names himself too after a woman they are both called helpers that means woman if you want to understand your ministry study the holy spirit he is called helper hallelujah let's trust god for grace that our homes will reflect the character of christ and change some of these negative statistics and let me tell you this men i stand and i beseech you by the message of god it's time to exalt the word of god above and beyond culture above and beyond ego above and beyond intellectualism we must submit to the word of god as final authority even over our homes if you are wrong say sorry don't just buy gifts say sorry it's as simple as that women do not be so educated or so wealthy or so proud that your knee becomes too far from touching the ground it does not remove anything from you the nobility of a woman is in her submission not her argument not her explanation the same way the church is at its best to the degree to which we submit to Jesus. Let me speak especially to younger women, respectfully speaking. 
beware of what you are learning online and around let me repeat it beware of what you are learning i love you sincerely but be careful by the grace of god this is a house that will communicate balance to the whole counsel of god let's not just ship nonsense and be destroying our homes are we together forgive me oh forgive me let me ask you for forgiveness now Hallelujah. Since I've spoken about the man and the woman, children, listen to me. In the name of Jesus, I beseech you. Let me teach you something. When a father fights his son, you lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, you lose your life. You need to understand, there are allocations to this thing. When a father fights his son, you will lose your honor. But when a son fights his father, the Bible says your lamp will be taken away from you and you'll be exposed to obscure darkness. We live in a world where rebellion is the definition of manliness. So many young people today find pride. Just yes, it is true that some of our parents may not see things exactly the way we are. We have the privilege of westernization and enlightenment. But can I tell you, in the midst of their supposed limitation, there is grace by reason of parenthood. You must honor it there are many children who would not be in trouble today had they listened to the supposed foolish counsel of parents they may not go to school but they have the eyes that can see there are some things only age can bring listen when mothers when you breastfeed a child no matter how healthy you are that child does not become an adult he becomes a well-nourished baby when an adult starves himself and becomes sick he does not turn into a baby he only becomes a malnourished elder so there are some things that are irreversible a baby is a baby an elder is an elder full stop hallelujah in as much as samuel would later become the priest and the prophet who would ordain Saul and even the kings. When God called Samuel, he called him through the voice of Eli. He went to Eli and said, Eli, you called me. Because he did not hear a cloud and a thunder. He had the voice of Eli. Let us be careful. I'm saying this respectfully speaking, especially to young men of God. This campaign of tearing down fathers, insulting people because we think we have more revelation, little power, little exposure, so that our generation will not be caused because of the pride of blindness. And let me tell you the truth. If there is anyone here and you are part of those insulting fathers, just because Noah's sons saw the father's nakedness, does not mean he stopped being anointed. When he got up without being told, he said, This one. And he cursed him. He said, Servant of servant. But as far as you are concerned, they deserve our honor in life and even in death.
prayer of repentance I have not given to match your blessing upon my life cry for repentance forgiveness I have not loved you sincerely I have enjoyed the blessings of the fathers and yet not accorded honor to them everything that has made for disobedience please call upon the God of heaven Someone is praying. He said, if I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear me when I pray. Having the readiness to judge every disobedience, if and when your obedience is complete, against your leaders in shame you have spoken against them saying yes sir in the open but criticizing and tearing them in the secret is time to pray and ask for forgiveness the bible says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways that i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin and i will heal their land lift your voice and begin to pray everybody please pray don't look around Pray, you want Jesus. The Spirit will repent from disobedience. Then there are those who 
receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare by the authority of scripture that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the Lamb in Jesus name keep your hands lifted Father thank you no one can call you to the Son to the Father except in the Son the Lord these ones have come boldly making this declaration the Bible declares that as many who will come you will in no wise extent we thank you for the gift of salvation and the power of the gospel. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. In the name of Jesus, I call you recipients of the life of God. I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I commend you to the ministry of the spirit and the ministry of the world that should be grounded and established in righteousness. From tonight, you go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church said, Amen. Okay, now this is an instruction to come with us. There will be leaders standing in front of you. I've seen this radio and it's all the leaders. I want you to follow all of them, whatever direction. Up. Okay, this way, all of you, my left, which should be your right if you're facing me. Let's celebrate them as they go. A few counselors will have a word with you. And then please, all of you in concert. Anyone who sat close to you, if they did not pick their bags and their Bibles, please, their neighbors will be their keepers to help them. Those up the balcony, please follow. Can I have someone waving his hand so that those up will see? God bless you. Someone is waving his hands. Word of life, is this the best you can do? Please, counselors, let's, I know there are a number of them, but if we could attend to them very quickly so that they come and join us, we are going to be doing three things in one right now. May I please request, if you have the prayer request and the ushers, if you've collated them, please can we have them in front very quickly. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Now, a very quick announcement. Our father has announced that some of the pastors may need to watch and go and join them. Please, if you're a pastor here, um, if, if the pastors within the house are exhausted, some of the sons of the prophet can also join to make this quick peace so that we have a few people attend to them very quickly at the home because we are about to pray. Someone's life is about to change right now. In the name of Jesus. Now, I have about five minutes or so, but within this time, your life is about to change. And I want you to believe it from the depth of your heart. Are we together now? From the rising of the sun 
to the setting of the sail. Your name is to be our. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sail, your name is to be our. Hallelujah. Now please lift your hands. Yes, what I want you to do. It'll be a very fast one. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Please, hear me. Whether you are conscious or not, I want you to help this one on that one. At that one shout, the Bible says, Now Jericho was shot. Nothing could go in and nothing could come out. But at that shout, the Bible says the world collapsed. The shout is not a ritual. He said the shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous. As you shout that name, the power of God will come on some of you. Please, I want you to help them. If you can bring them out very quickly. Are you ready now? Father, everything that is not of God, that has tied down the life and the destiny of any man, any woman, any pastor, any businessman. The Bible says, Wherefore well, God has so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven, the earth, and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. Therefore I declare, at this shout of the name of Jesus, let fire fall from heaven. Are you ready now? At the count of three, please bring those under the anointing now. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I decree and declare, chains be broken. Help them, please. Help them. We have a shalabara for Sedekate, Embra Katabaka for Sakatea, Embra Katos. Bring them out. Ratakatoska Telekata. New season. Fresh fire. Please bring them out very quickly. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing people whose hands are tied with chains. Your hand is a symbol of productivity. I want to pray for you. The fire of God will come upon you. Please bring them out. Right now, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice, Whose productivity has been tied down. Shabakataka. At the count of three, let that fire fall upon you now. One, two, three. Take that grace. Help them, please. I break that chain now. I break a pakatoshka tekata. I break that chain now. Help those, please. Help them at the back there. Bring them out. Hallelujah. There are people who the doors of your destiny would have been open, but by witchcraft and manipulation, it had been closed. This place we have the key of David by grace. He said, I, I hold the key of David and I can open a door that no man can shut. I'm about to pray. Please, you'll see people who begin to run now. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. Father, every destiny, help them, that has been tied by witchcraft, 
Right now, at the count of three, be released. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be released. Be released now. Be released now. Help that man. Help that man. Be released now. Bring them out. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Now, hear me, please. If you are in business, raise your hand. Something is about to rest. If you are in business, lift your hand. Listen, believe me when I tell you, unbelievers know this, that it takes more than just selling products to rise. There is a spiritual dimension to it. In spite of the value that you provide and serve in the marketplace, the king of Tyre is still here, tying down the destinies of men. Say unto God, how terrible are thou with your ways. He says, it is through the greatness of thy power that thy enemies submit themselves to you. I want to pray. There is an anointing that is coming on you. For many of you, I, I do not kid you. In one month, after this conference, what God will do in your life and your business, it will be as if you held a child. In the name of Jesus. Get ready now. Something is coming upon you. Father, everywhere across this auditorium, there are men and women who must rise by the commanded blessing. Therefore, I decree and declare, Shabakata At the count of three, are you ready now? One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace. Help them. Go and excel. Command authority and dominion in the marketplace. Command authority and dominion, help that lady, in the marketplace. Hallelujah. Let me stand upon the grace of our Father and agree with every servant of the gospel, every man and woman of God. It's time for every reproach in ministry to go. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Not because things changed by before. He got to a point in his life where he was tired. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Jesus, 
new sounds you will hear them in your dreams new sounds you will hear them as you worship in the name of Jesus new sounds of the spirit help that lady please please help them so they don't enjoy themselves now hear me hear me anyone here under the influence of the spirit of today how do you know delays are what in your life when the only thing growing is your age if the only thing growing in your life is your age and nothing else is growing you are under a strong influence of the spirit of delay i want to release you now the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran people will begin to run now Help them. Father, let the mantle for speed right now come upon people and end seasons of delay. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. My God. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. Hear me. This is the most accurate representation of your requests. Even if we prophesy, we see in part. And we can only say according to the past that we see. But you wrote this yourself. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 says to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving he says let your request be made known unto god i want you to stretch your hands upon this sacred altar as a point of contact you don't have to kneel but i will bow my knee if you are yet to submit your prayer request please push us through that quickly hear me the god that answers by fire is about to descend upon this request and for some of you you will receive answers instantly Go ahead and begin to pray that these Egyptians I see today, I will see them no more. Word of life, are you praying?
And to 
those constraints were not there. There is a difference between restoration and progress. I declare, anyone here who has been tied down by witchcraft or tied down by any satanic mechanism, in the name of Jesus, by prophecy, I take 10 years and put it in one year for you. Yes, in your one year, one year in your one month, in the name of Jesus Christ.
years or one of life, I stand by the privilege of God's grace upon the grace of our Father, and I declare to every man, every mother, every child, every pastor, every businessman, in the name of Jesus, be blessed, 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 be blessed. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.